Welcome to the Albuquerque Journal's Tech Outlook podcast. CNM is truly one college with infinite possibilities in tech and data sciences. CNM offers programs where everyone can learn about software, apps, or how to build websites. You can also choose from AI programs and machine learning, the Internet of Things, and so much more. CNM, one college, infinite possibilities, and the proud sponsor of the Tech Outlook podcasts. Hi, welcome back to Tech Outlook. I'm Ryan Botel with the Albuquerque Journal, and I'm joined today by Mary Monson, who is the Technology Partnership and Business Development Senior Manager at Sandia National Laboratories. Mary, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. And can we start? Can you uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit, bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I've been at Sandia for quite a while, since the really the beginning of tech transfer, since um, legislation was put in place that so that national labs could work with U.S. industry to transition technology for economic security and strength. And so that's been 30 years plus. Um, and I've been always in that area working at Sandia. So it's my passion. It's what I love. And I've done various roles there. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit just what is the, the what is the goal of your job when it's tech transfer at Sandia? How do you, would you describe that to the community? That's a great question. Um, tech transfer is actually called out in our prime contract with uh, the National Nuclear Security Administration as a mission of the laboratories. Mm -hmm. That's how important um, DOE, NNSA, and the labs feel it is. So really, the, the role is to transition technologies out of the lab um, for mission benefit, and we're a multi-mission laboratory, and to also foster innovation because engaging with industry really, you know, the needs are very immediate, and it, it fosters innovation in our staff and gives them opportunity to work on, you know, a, a little bit different type of work. Mm -hmm. Now, why would the NNSA, because we know nuclear security when we hear that, yeah. why is it also their mission to, you know, tech transfer and kind of stimulate the economy around the lab? Yeah, so that's been legislated for all national labs. Um, and there's a lot of upside for NNSA. Um, we create suppliers for our programs. They're even uh, some of our researchers take their technology, uh, leave the labs, start a company, and end up being suppliers to the labs. Uh, so this would be more mature technology because at the labs we work on more of the cutting edge uh, kinds of work. And, and then they will become suppliers to others Department of Defense, et cetera. So fostering those suppliers, we don't need a lot of um, units, if you will, or, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a low level of supplier opportunity generally. Um, but those researchers who leave and start their companies, they really expand and build on the technology that they worked on at Sandia, and they've created some pretty uh, interesting companies in Albuquerque. Okay, great. And I want to get into that. But when we talk about, when you were talking about suppliers, is that, is my understanding this correct? You know, at Sandia, you're doing the science and developing the technology, but you're not really scaling it up and producing something that's going to be a commercial product. So is that kind of where you come in, is taking, taking that idea and turning it into a... Yeah. And a lot of these technologies have different applications. Mm -hmm. So they can be, you know, what's called dual use. So they can be um, used in different markets, for okay. example, okay, in national security. Great. And now let's get into it. What are some of the examples of tech transfer that you've worked on, an idea from the labs that turned into a successful company? Well, um, takes a village, so... It's not so much me. It's, sure. a, it's a whole team of people. Um, I would say that uh, some of the uh, technologies um, are 
we call it the bayonet reactor. But uh, Bayotec, as you may be aware, is a New Mexico-based company that licensed this bayonet reactor from Sandia uh, for on-site hydrogen and nitrogen fertilizer production. So they intend to create as many as 200 jobs um, in New Mexico. Um, they have a partnership with um, Process Equipment and Service Company in Farmington, which manufactures the company's reactor units. And so we've not only worked with them on that technology, the reactor, we've also had the opportunity to work with them and other companies in the hydrogen industry to ensure uh, safe and reliable operations because we have uh, that capability at Sandia. Mm -hmm. And so often these partnerships can be multifaceted. Okay. So that would be one example. And so this, a, a person at Sandia was a scientist at Sandia and they created what they called a bayonet reactor? Yes. <laughs> and then they went and got a patent on it, or how did that go? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when did it? How did that become? I'm a I'm a scientist at Sandia. I created this, and now I'm going to branch off and create Biotech. Well, in this case, um, the scientists did not go with the technology. Oh. So we often have the situation where the scientist stays at the laboratory. We have different uh, ways that we can make the scientist's time available um, and, um, you know, they'll work with the company through some kind of agreement mm -hmm. to support the further development, scaling, and ultimately production of whatever technology is transferred. Okay. So do you and your team, is that your job to go take this patent that was found at Sandia and found uh, find a business professional who can maybe scale that up is that yeah we work to get the word out um opportunities like this mm -hmm. we have a lot of opportunities in the community to engage with you know business owners uh would-be entrepreneurs and and so forth uh but we are a national laboratory so we uh we really make um our technologies known nationwide Okay. Yeah. All right. And and how do you do that? Do you just is there uh, is it networking? Is it um, is there just a process for it? Or well, networking is one way. Um, of course, uh, online marketing, um, speaking at events. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of print material for conferences. We attend a lot of conferences where networking is involved. And, uh, you know, there are a few um, tools that we use. DOE's Office of Technology Transitions has uh, a site called Lab Partnering Service. Mm -hmm. And we put a lot of our technologies on that site. Um, some researcher profiles as well, uh, highlighting their capabilities uh, and experience. And then we put all of our opportunities are on SAM.gov. Mm -hmm. Do you think, does the fact that Sandia has this um, mechanism in place to uh, transfer tech into an economic development situation, does that help you recruit scientists to the labs who may know that this could lead to more opportunity, economic opportunities? I, I think it appeals to uh, a, per, a high percentage of our uh, researchers at the labs. Um, I think they really enjoy getting to help companies. They enjoy applying their, either their know-how or their, you know, technology in, in a different setting. So we have a couple of state programs um, that are gross receipts tax credit programs. One is the New Mexico Small Business Assistance Program where uh, we can um, make available 20K in Santa Fe and Bernalillo County to companies uh, of the researchers' time, and 40k rurally. And I know that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it's uh, it 
goes further than most of our funding because we don't have loads on it. And so, um, you know, the staff can work with these New Mexico small businesses and and make a, a big impact um, and it still, you know, be doing their day job, mm-hmm. more or less. Earlier, we were talking about a program where uh, someone at Sandia can leave for two years and try to start a business. And then if it doesn't work out, they sort of have that a comparable job waiting for them. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's our entrepreneurial separation to transfer technology program. Um, we put that in place early on. So when we had this opportunity for tech transfer, Sandia and our Sandia field office, though they are our kind of oversee us for NNSA, we really embraced it. Um, and so I think we're one of the few labs that has a program like this. So our uh, researchers and business people, if they go with a technology or researchers, can leave the labs for two years and um, try it, try it out, be an entrepreneur. If things don't work out, they are guaranteed a, a comparable job back at the labs. Yeah, I can imagine that uh, uh, could be appealing for a um, maybe a risk averse scientist who has a very comfortable, good job at Sandia and is maybe I want to go try something. But this kind of takes some of that risk away. Absolutely. And um, we've most of the people do stay out with their companies. Hmm. We have folks that come back. But that experience, um, it really enriches their experience base so much that many of them have moved on into higher levels of management and more responsibility. And they bring that, you know, what I learned as an entrepreneur to Sandia, and that really benefits us, too. Okay. And we were talking about um, some of the companies that have kind of spawned from this. You mentioned uh, Biotech, but there's just there's so much interesting science that goes on at Sandia. So is there any of these companies that are doing a type of science that might surprise people that this science was done at at Sandia National Labs? I think so. I can talk Mm -hmm. about one of those Mm -hmm. examples. So a company called Quasar. Okay. Um, It's kind of at the height of the pandemic in around 2000 timeframe, um, this Florida based company wanted to work, um, with us and they were kind of setting the standard or working to achieve a rapid COVID-19 test. Mm -hmm. And, um, they, uh, set up a new company in New Mexico, kind of a division. Um, So the the company's Quasar, and this division in New Mexico is Quasar Diagnostics. And um, they um, have taken this uh, technology from Sandia, licensed it, and uh, it's called Quasar. And um, it was originally developed to detect mosquito-borne viruses. So we're really continuing to collaborate with them. But um, just that uh, relationship bringing a new company to New Mexico, I think, and also many people don't know that Sandia has quite a a robust research activity in biosciences. Okay. In biosciences. Can you explain what Sandia does in biosciences? Yes, I can. (laughs) You're mixing the questions up for me, and I'm very linear. Um, yeah, so Sandia uh, did a lot during the pandemic, and there was probably a lot of press around that mm-hmm. at that time, but we did a lot during the pandemic. But we work in, you know, areas that were very helpful um, during that time. And so we, we still have ongoing cooperative research and development agreements, licenses, and other collaborations uh, in this area that were, that were initiated during the pandemic. But we, we do have um, technology that um, addresses challenges and threats around uh, infectious diseases and other concerns in public health. So Sandia researchers conduct uh, basic and applied research 
in infectious disease and pathogens, host pathogen interactions, and immunology. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this leads to a wide array of countermeasures, which is our national security mission. Uh, but um, dual use of this technology is, you know, obvious. Um, detection, medical diagnostics, therapeutics, and vaccines. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, that kind of hits it on the head right there. You mentioned two companies that spawned out of tech at Sandia. One of them's working in some type of fertilizer and one of them's... Well, hydrogen. 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 And, and fertilizer. Okay. But so we've got that and then, you know, tr tr uh, uncovering viruses and, and illnesses and things like that. Two wildly different types of companies, right? Right. So how does that happen? Why is there... What would you just say about the type of technology that's going on at Sandia that it can lead to just these two vastly different startup companies? Well, we're a very large laboratory. The threats to the nation are many, um, mm -hmm. as, as we know. And uh, we, we really uh, work across that whole you know, landscape of threats. But additionally, and people may not know, we, we do a lot in energy, mm -hmm. renewable energy, grid security. Uh, we do a lot of work in climate research. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of our partnerships are in that area, too. Well, and in some ways, isn't that also national security? I mean, when you're talking about energy independence, viruses, yeah. I mean, food, it, like th those are national security issues, right? Yes. And so we're doing the more groundbreaking research and then transitioning to U.S. companies for scale up is um, the objective. Yeah. And business licenses that have spawned from Sandia technology, those have increased in recent years, right? Am I uh, correct in understanding that? Yes. What effect has that had on our economy? Uh, well, I would say that I can start with the national economy, mm -hmm. and that is um, uh, uh, due to a recent study that was commissioned by the National Nuclear Security Administration that um, showed that over 20 years, so they looked at all of our cooperative research and development agreements and our patent licenses. Uh, our laboratory had a $140 billion impact on the U.S. economy. Okay. That's a lot of money. Yeah. That's on the entire U.S., though. I, For our New Mexico-based programs, um, for the... New Mexico Small Business Assistance Program um, since 2000. We, this is a joint program with Los Alamos. Mm -hmm. uh, the the two national labs have provided 80.6 million in technical assistance to over 3,000 New Mexico small businesses, enabling over 12,000 jobs to be created and retained across mm -hmm. the 33 counties. Okay. Um, so. We also really keep our eye on, you know, what, how we're strengthening the New Mexico economy. Mm -hmm. And do you have goals for the future when it comes to strengthening the New Mexico economy with this technology? Well, absolutely. So um, a couple of years ago, DOE's Office of Technology Transitions made uh, an opportunity available to all the national labs but only the tech transfer offices. So pioneering, never been done before. Um, we completely embraced that opportunity and put in proposals. Two of them have had, uh, two of the funded projects, uh, we did receive over $8 million just to work on tech transfer. So two of those projects have benefited New Mexico um, and one of them is called Boost. It's a, it's a project that focuses on um, entrepreneurs and communities that have not interacted as much with the national laboratories. And that project brings the technology of 14 national laboratories. So we 
go to communities. Uh, some of the New Mexico communities have been Cuesta, Las Vegas, Socorro, um, Albuquerque, South Valley, for example. Um, there are a few more, but they're not coming immediately <laughs> to mind. And really talking to those communities, doing a workshop, understanding their issues from their perspective. And then we recruit entrepreneurs from those communities and match them with intellectual property. It can be from any of the 14 labs hmm. to address those community issues. And so um, we've had uh, you know, some notable success there. Uh, one of the companies, GridFlow, um, is engaging with us on uh, another state program we have, the Technology Readiness Gross Receipts Initiative, where we can do a, a cooperative research and development agreement or a license with one of these com New Mexico companies uh, uh, to really mature that technology with the researchers. So the scale is much bigger than NMSBA. It's 150 k Mm -hmm. uh, a year up to for that program. So with GridFlow, we're working on um, uh, like electric vehicle recharging uh, batteries. Mm -hmm. um, another, uh, and, and that entrepreneur is from Albuquerque. Another group that formed up from these community workshops um, is a Santa Fe based company that they are licensing our algal technology mm -hmm. and they've been in discussions with the city of santa fe uh, to be a tertiary uh, treatment in the in the water treatment for the city of santa fe okay um so this program has just allowed us to do much more than we've been able to do in the past because with the additional funding and resources mm -hmm. Yeah, that's because you're doing it on both ends. Both we'll take our technology and find the entrepreneur, or we'll give our scientists the freedom to go off and shoot their shot and right. see we're, what they can we're, do. <clears throat> we're trying all kinds of new things. This boost program very experimental. We learned a lot in year one. Um, and oh, I should mention the algal company is called Clean Aqua Solutions. Okay, and. What I really love about that story is communities want to invest in people from their community. Mm -hmm. It's so the whole Santa Fe story. I, I just love it. It's very cool. Um, but I wanted to talk about our another project called C4. Okay. And I should know what all of that means. I could <laughs> look at my notes. It's like, yeah. Collaboration, communication, co-location, and community. Okay. So this is a, a New Mexico-focused project looking at how we can strengthen manufacturing in the state. Mm. So uh, we've been working with a, a, a small company out of southern New Mexico called Sanu and looking at how we can team with the universities, the faculty and the students from New Mexico State, New Mexico Tech, and UNM to address a challenge that the company has. And the company uh, can take a license to a portfolio of around 60 patents from across the DOE complex. Many different labs are involved through one license agreement. So that okay. had never been done before. Um, so these, you know, OTT funded projects have provided additional opportunity to benefit New Mexico. Yeah. I mean, that's t how do we use technology to solve a problem? It's solutions based. And mature work. the solution and build our future manufacturing workforce uh, in partnership with the universities. And um, really, we're looking at uh, a facility that Sandia is standing up called Camino where we can be having uh, partners moving in and out of that facility. And we can be um, transferring know-how and giving New Mexico companies access to equipment that they would not normally have access to. 
Okay. And this is for your specifically for like advanced manufacturing. Yes. Are we in like the renewable energy type of manufacturing yeah. or more broad? Okay. Uh, it's, it's all across all of our programs, and okay. mission spaces. Why is that important to kind of bring back manufacturing to New Mexico? I mean, that's just, we hear it a lot. It's sort of a buzzword, supply chains, nearshoring. Well, I think we learned a lot during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. At Sandia, we were, you know, here's how you make a mask out of a T-shirt, mm-hmm. you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. It was like by the time the the virus gets to us, there will be no PPE. Mm-hmm. There will be no ventilators. We got to completely MacGyver this. So I, I think on so many levels, we learned that supply chain is critical for the well-being of our country for the security of our country. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you've seen the federal government. There's been a lot of move to bring reshore manufacturing. And like I said, we're New Mexico, we thought we were going to have to be completely self-sufficient. Now it didn't end up to be as dire as we, th- it, I mean, mm-hmm. the pandemic was very dire, but we were not without completely without equipment and PPE and so forth. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that we made it like 11 episodes into a Tech Outlook podcast before somebody brought up MacGyver, um, because that's sort of what tech is a little bit, right? It's just uh, figuring (laughs) things out. It's probably, you know, an old school thing to say. I like MacGyver. I watched it when I was a kid, so... Um, all right, Mary. Well, thank you so much for coming in here and talking to us about what you do. And, and thanks for doing what you do. It's uh, Sandy is, you know, certainly a gem of our community. And it's always nice to bring people in to tell, tell us all a little bit about what's going on there. Well, thanks for the opportunity. I, you know, it's my favorite subject. So I always love to talk about it. Okay, great. Well, Mary, thank you much for joining thank us. Thank you. All right.